Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Ellis and today I wanted to talk about philodendrons and show you my philodendron collection. And if time permits, I will show you my Raphidophoras and my new Hoyas. Philodendrons are the second largest genus of Araceae. The largest one is Ethereums. There are about 500 different types of philodendrons, so it's a huge family. Philodendrons are the ones that are often mislabeled as pothas at like Home Depot and stores like this. I don't know why some farms and some nurseries are just notorious at mislabeling their plants or if they do it intentionally to get people to buy them. One of the surest way to recognize if it's a pothos or a philodendron is that the philodendrons that look like pothos actually have a heart-shaped leaf and their leaves start out in a seeth, while the pothos does not. Please let me know in the comments what are your favorite philodendrons and what philodendrons are on your wish list. So I didn't have any philodendrons until I traded a homemade plant stand with one of the group members in my amazing Vancouver plant community group. And she gave me a philodendron hestatum, which is this one here. It's commonly known as philodendron silver sword due to the foliage being silvery and super nice. I really like this guy. It grows so quickly. I can't remember how long ago I got him, but it was, it was only like this tall. And in a matter of months, it has gotten this tall. And then <laughs> it got stuck in the seeth here. But thanks to wet ass plants on Instagram, uh, he told me to just spray it with water to lubricate the plant to help it get out of the seeth properly. And that seems to be working. It's a little bit crooked still and a little funny, but it's so adorable though. I just repotted him. I am going to have to figure out a taller moss pole soon or propagate him, chop up some bits. It's very easy to propagate philodendron hestatum because you can see it has all the nodes here where the air roots are you just cut between them and propagate them in your favorite manner i am very partial to sphagnum moss propagation i just find it easier to transfer them from sphagnum moss to soil because they when you water propagate the plant will produce water roots and it takes them a while to acclimate to the soil. But I find with Magnum Moss that the transfer from moss to soil is just way, way easier. Evelyn also gave me this Philodendron Hatteraceum Brazil. The variegation is currently not very yellow and I don't know if that's because it's not getting enough sunlight or if it's very juvenile still. The Philodendrons, they really like a lot of sunlight and like, most plants really do. Do not buy into low light plants. It's a marketing ploy. <laughs> they tell you that plants thrive in low light so they can sell you more plants because not everybody has space to put their plants in full sunlight. You might see this one often in the background of my videos. I have him in this little pot here and have him hanging down from the ceiling. I installed an unreasonable amounts of hooks in the ceiling to have some floating kogadamas. I think it's really fun. And of course, after I got my first two philodendrons, I couldn't be stopped and I had to have more. So after I got my first two philodendrons, I couldn't be stopped because if you are not new here, you know me, once I get one plant in a plant family, I must have more. I found this gorgeous, Philodendron Heterasium Lemon Lime at Stong's Market with huge gorgeous leaves. This one sits on top of my floating bookshelf and I'm hoping that it will grow really well and start to cascade 
down the wall in a nice waterfall. So stems at the time had more philodendrons and got a full tray of philodendron birkins. So I got this gorgeous specimen for um, $10, I think. I think I locked out really well. This bushy and thick and beautiful for like 10 bucks. Yeah, it was $10.99. And it has really nice variegation. So philodendron birkin is basically just a variegated philodendron concorojo. And if you don't give it enough light, it will revert back eventually. And I've noticed that the variegation tends to kind of like come and go. I have this one under grow lights, just Amazon grow lights, not super expensive. And it seems to be doing really well. It has a nice looking variegation on this new leaf here. Just gotta watch out for some mealybugs with these guys. And as I said, Philodendron Birkin is just a variegated Kokorojo. So I grabbed another Philodendron Birkin that had a lot of red on it. And this one doesn't get a lot of bright sunlight. So I'm kind of allowing it to revert back so I don't have to buy a Kokorojo. <laughs> and here you can see it's very red at the stem here. I suffer sometimes from grand illusion and since Birkins are variegated concorojos and this one is so pink, I'm just like, what if it turns into a pink princess? Okay, turn into a pink princess. I don't, I'm not sure if it was pushing down this much when I got it or if it's just stretching down for some light. Pushing out a new leaf here, stuck in the stuck in the seeth, so I might have to help this one as well. Look, this leaf here is halfway through. It's funny how, like if you look at the stem, it's really split in half with being red and being green and light here. Doot. Almost two plants in one. So of course I am going to expand my philodendron collection further. Uh, I am hopefully going to be able to go out to mission and visit a new very wonderful Facebook friend who is gonna trade with me, sell with me some philodendron micans that I just think are absolutely gorgeous. I love, love trailing plants. I think besides the fiddle leaf fig, pothos is really one of my favorite plants and that entire family. So the micans and the philodendrons that are trailing and mining variations of philodendrons are a big, own a big place in my heart. Um, if I had a bigger place to put plants, I would 100% get a philodendron orange prince and all the beautiful varieties that are out there. Um, and I'm really lucky that I really love mostly philodendrons that are the, kind of the cheaper kind. I, I find it hard to like find expensive plants that I actually find really beautiful. I think I'm quite lucky that I haven't fallen into the anthenthrium. Anthenthrium. Oh my god. I'm really lucky that I haven't become obsessed with anthoriums because, yes, yeah, some of them are very pretty, but I just don't think they're $90 a cutting pretty. But yeah, I'm really impressed with the ones that people have. Um, and that brings me to the next plants because uh, my friend, I hope she doesn't mind if I call her my friend because she gave me free Hoya cutting. So Volkang's mama, you are my friend now. You should check out her channel because I did not think I was a Hoya person until I started watching her channel and now I'm obsessed with Hoyas. Well, not obsessed, but really, really love them. So she gave me a cutting of a 
Hoya Grimson Tricolor. Really nice leaf. I put it into just pure sphagnum moss with some Marfil soil, soil enhancer. I'm having a lot of luck with that. I currently have some Monstera Adansonia cuttings in there that are doing so well. My Trascensia zebrina is just amazing and has grown so much after I transferred it into the soil. So, Smagma Moss Propagation. She also gave me a Hoya Compacta. Mealybug's best friend. Good thing though, mealybugs are usually easy to spot and you just squish them with some alcohol as soon as they come and then you're good. And before Volkang's mama offered me, or Amy, her name is Amy, offered me her cuttings, I had bought a Hoya Publix. I think that, I think so. I think, I think that's how you say it. Very pretty variegation. Um, I've had this one for maybe two weeks or something, and I already have two new leaves. This has grown quite a bit, and this has grown a lot. I don't know a lot about Hoyas, but I'm excited. And as I said, I really love trailing plants, and they're really gorgeous, fun trailers. And they kind of um, are the best of both worlds because they both have like thick, juicy, waxy leaves and are also a trailing plant. And then my Raphidophoras that are a special mention in this video. This video is supposed to be mainly about philodendrons. I just wanted to show you these as well. So I found a baby Raphidophora tetrasperma at Home Depot. It's not in a great shape, and the ones I've been seeing are not in a great, sh great shape. But I am determined to let it grow and uh, get all nice again. I took off the most water damaged leaves, and now it's pushing out some very nice split leaves. I don't know if you can see it, but it has a split here. Raffita forest, like. You could convince me that they were a philodendron. I wouldn't be surprised because after all, there are 500 different kinds of, of philodendrons, 489 to be exact. Apparently these guys grow really fast and they like to climb. So I'm excited. And then I found a Raphidophora decursiva that has the world's most beautiful foliage that I have ever seen. It's so striking. Eventually, as it get bigger, it will start to split their leaves. Oh, and that's something that I should mention about philodendrons. So philodendrons, they have juvenile leaves and then they have adult leaves. So as they get bigger, their leaves transform a lot and sometimes they look nothing like the juvenile leaves. That is the same with uh, Raphidophora, a decursiva, for example, they start out on the young plants like this, all whole, and as it gets bigger and bigger and you let it climb, they start to produce split leaves. And that's why they're called dragon tails sometimes. I think that's, I think these are referred to as dragon tails as well. These guys are often mislabeled as Apropinanum pinnatum. Thank you so much, Crystal, for correcting me on that. I was looking for a Raphidophora decursiva, but then I saw this one as Apropinanum pinnatum, and I googled it, and they looked so much alike, and then there were also a lot of photos mislabeled on Google, so I kind of took it at face value, but thankfully I have some really good and knowledgeable Facebook plant friends. Boom! Boom, 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 boom. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please follow me on my social media, especially if you're looking for plants, follow me on my Instagram. Uh, plants have kind of taken over my Instagram with a occasional selfie. If you're interested in some of my immigration journey and my road to citizenship, check out my TikTok. I use that a lot 
to make updates on that, which reminds me, I should redo my citizenship application because I started filling it out in 2019. That's quite outdated. All right. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.